So we've got a bunch of different series coming on to YouTube and onto our website and Facebook, all over our uh, social media channels. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do a series on chronomids. So I'm going to start with very basic chronomids that everybody should learn how to tie. And as we progress over the next months, we're going to actually get a little more complex. You know, we'll put wing buds on. We'll show various ways to do the wing buds, double rib, you know, a bunch of different cool little tricks you can do to improve your chronomids. And I'm going to hopefully get some really great guest tires to do some chronomids too. We've got some fabulous people that <laughs> out there that tie some just amazing chronomids. But what I'm going to do is start with a very basic one. Again, for the next three or four, we're going to do some really basic ties for the beginners. And then again, we'll advance. So the first one I'm going to do is our favorite one. It is a gunmetal gray. Really, it's a, it's a gunmetal gray chronomid. Most of my flies are now going to be on a 14. I want to tie it on a size 2X long 14 is my favorite hook to use. And of course, all the different colored beads. You know, I've got a, uh, a black nickel we're going to use today and we'll show the various different colored beads to match ribs and things like that as we progress. So today we're going to do a basic pattern again. And for, let's see, we're going to use the black thread to start. Just some, uh, you know, I've got some, you're going to use ADOT. I like ADOT for my chronomus, keep them thin. ADOT black thread. White Antron for the gills. Anything works for the gills, you know, ostrich, uh, just a little, anything to imitate gills, but I find this White Antron is just perfect for the gills. Uh, again, for the hook, 2X long, size 14, 7 64th inch bead. Now, you always try to match the bead size, and we're going to go through the different bead sizes, you know, 3 32nd, pretty small, size 16. You get to the 14s, 7 64th, and so forth, you know, all the way up to the to the big ones. But for this one here again, just this uh, 7 64th uh, black nickel for this one here. Um, we're actually going to use 0.2 lead, uh, the red wire. So I like how since it is the only rib, we go a little bit more pronounced, a little bit bigger wire. So the 0.2 millimeter for that, the red wire. And this buzzer wrap, we're going to use the buzzer wrap. You know, a lot of times people use anti-static bags it's it's really good but this stuff here is not only uv you know glows in the dark but it's actually got a, a real good color to it so we'll use that for the body and the black thread again to build the body so let's get into the tie and again you saw the materials so enjoy this one again very basic tie all right let's start with the gunmetal gray and red and i've already shown you the material list so first off we're just gonna and our thread and then I love the white antron again this just comes in little strips like that it's real easy to to put on so let's find an end let's take a couple of wraps cut off your excess and now I'll give it a quick whip finish just to get rid of your thread. And now, once we have that, we can move our bead up. And I've put the bead with the wide side towards the eyelid. I always put the wide side out because now when you watch, when I push it up, it covers that up. And I always like, I like to leave that. I don't want to actually, I don't want to tie in front of that uh, Antron. Because I and it's not going to cover the eyelet. I want that though to look natural when it's in the water. When I put on a loop knot there, this antron will cover it up and look like gills. So now that we've got our antron tied in, I'm just going to wrap over that material and tie in a little bit of a base layer there. Cut that off. Next, I'm going to tie in my rib. Now, I want a red rib. So when I'm tying in these type beginner hooks, I like to use a little, a little bigger wire. You know, I mentioned the 0.2 millimeter red wire. As I get into more complex patterns and I'm tying more ribs in, I'll actually go to a thinner wire. But for this one here, I want it to be the only rib and pronounced. So again, start it just behind the bead and then make equal turns all the way back. Again, just keep it thin. Chronomids are thin. And depending on the size you want, I'll go down just partially down the hook bend. Sometimes I'll go halfway, sometimes I'll leave it near the top. That's good for the rep. 
move my thread back up kind of to the middle and then we'll take take about two strands of our fluorescent smoke buzzer wrap and this buzzer wrap is you know it, it glows in the dark it's actually quite impressive and that's why I love it for a body so we're just going to tie in some strands there and again pull it a bit and just you'll work your way back to the tail just back to the back of the hook and then you know just cut off any of your excess up here sometimes what I'll even do is just bring my thread back up and wrap that bit of buzz wrap in just to make the body even now what we'll do just form a bit of a taper on the fly so this is forming a bit of a taper so again keep the back fairly thin right we want this to be fairly thin at the back and then slowly build up a bit of thread to taper the body <clears throat> and we'll also taper the body with the material with the body material but again build up a bit of a taper finish off behind your bead now we'll start wrapping up those two or three strands whatever you tied in of that buzzer wrap and again keep it thin at the back and as you move forward continue to build that taper Now I'll take a few more turns right near the top just so I get a little bit bigger build near the top and then finish off right behind the bead. So now that we have the body tied in, again, this is a very basic pattern, but very effective. I take one wrap at the back, right behind all that material, and then I'll start winding my wire forward. And I take equal equidistance between each one. There's two, there's three, there's four, five, six, and that's finished right up by the bead and then tie it off. Now one big thing if you're a beginner tire, just take it and whirl it, whirl your wire and then it just breaks off. Don't cut it with your scissors because if you cut it with your scissors you're gonna not only wear your scissors down but it tends to leave a tag there. If you do a little whirl with the wire it breaks off easy. Now again very basic chronomid and I want to just build up a black thorax here. So I'm just going to build up a little bit of a black thorax right there. Just so it blends with the bead. So now I've got a nice segmentation. I've got equal segments of my rib. I've got a nice shiny body. And that dull head that blends really nicely with the bead. Just a few whip finishes because we are going to coat this fly. And again, when you cut off your, cut off your thread, this is beginner, just... Just kind of don't even scissor it just let it let the thread break off and then cut off any excess that you have now quick trip trick a quick tip when you're gonna cut the gills some people just cut them cut them to whatever length I like to pull them back over the bead so I get the same distance all the time going behind the bead and then snip that actually flares those gills and makes them about the same size every time and you got to remember the gills are very pronounced on chironomids when they emerge. They're very, very pronounced. You can see them wiggling up and they're really, the gills stand out. So if anything, I cut my gills bigger to start. And if I, if I have to trim them on the water, I will. But normally I don't have to. Normally they really like that pronounced gill. Now, what I'm going to do to keep the fly in focus, I'm just going to take some, you know, any kind of UV coat and just coat it up. Just coat the fly up. And again, make sure you get it all over. Normally, I'll spin it a little bit. I don't want the fly going too much out of focus. Yeah, I will I'll give it a little spin. So I've coated it well. So now I've loosened up my vise. And then what I can do is just move that, move that coating around a bit. I just want everything nicely coated on this fly. And it really gives it a great look. You've got not only that glowing body on it with that, uh, you know, fluorescent smoke 
buzzer wrap, but you've got this beautiful UV coating on the fly. Now what we'll do is, now that we have the coating all nice and blended, just hit it with that UV lamp and you'll see the fly glow. You know, again, that's that buzzer wrap, that fluorescent smoke buzzer wrap is absolutely incredible. It, it just, especially for deep line coron emitting, it just glows down there. You've got a dull bead, that beautiful, you know, gills on the top, a nice red color to it, and that really chrome body gleams in darker water. So just heat that up, give that a real nice UV coat, and there you have it. You know, a very basic chronomet. So I'm going to do a few on this, uh, as I mentioned on the intro, a few on the basic chronomet series. You know, I'll do some, this is one of my favorites with the red rib. We'll do some with a black rib. We'll do some in a kind of a wood duck color. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully everybody enjoys this one. Again, beginner, start to these chronomets, and then we'll get a little more complicated as we go. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.